So I'm Jalen. I'm Kevin. And uh, our project for these past five weeks was mainly focused on processing simulation data, astrophysical data, and uh, working on implementing that so that we could visualize it better. Okay. Um, so it starts, here's a, there's kind of a hierarchy as to where all this data comes from. First, there's simulation code that lives in a software called Proteus and it outputs, it outputs a very a wider range of data that, that is hard for people to understand. But it contains a ton of information and what we do is we kind of strain that information that makes it more understandable. So there's this other component called lava flow which acts as kind of a strain to the simulation data and and then it gets inputted to YT and the YT project is a Python project that will that we use to plot the the domain the space domain in a wide in whatever way is useful to us and then after we get those plots we upload them our job was to upload them to Casanova in the PyNet. And there was a picture here that showed a handy diagram, but... Okay, so uh, basically the diagram shows uh, the, this, uh, this hierarchy. Uh, if you could see the image on the left, you, you'll have Proteus uh, branching off into uh, YT and low flow which goes to PyNet and eventually to the online database, which is Casanova, that the uh, users can access. Okay, uh, we work most closely with YT, and YT is a project that was worked on by uh, astrophysical, astrophysics people throughout the world, grad students, professors, and it's open source, anyone can work on it to improve it, to add functionality to it. And it was, it, it's in the Python language, and it's used to visualize 3D data. So not just uh, astrophysical data, but also uh, hydromagnetic data or anything like that. So the general gist of it is that it reads in the data set that is produced from uh, from Proteus. And then what you can do is you can specify what you want from YT, what you want YT to do with it. For example, I want to plot uh, the temperature across this galaxy. I want to see how the density changes with respect to distance from a certain place. And uh, this is what we get out of it. Okay, so, all right. Okay. <laughs> so this this uh, this image was produced from real simulation code that was outputted, and we got to work with this big file. It was several gigabytes big, and. How how uh, how it, how this three D domain can be represented on a two D image like this? You can either slice it like a two D plane, or you can project it onto onto a surface. But we'll get to that later. Uh, you can see that we have plotted temperature here, so we use this pseudo color scale to represent that, and. Uh, we have the x and y axis, but you can specify, of course, whether you want it based on y or z, or x or z. So uh, this 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 uh, this plot is showing actually uh, several things going on. We have an exploding star event, and over here, if you can see these waves, that depicts kind of uh, kelvin helmholtz instability. Which is when, which is when you have uh, two planes of water rubbing against each other, eventually it becomes unstable, and then 
there's it forms these clumps of waves. And uh, I experimented with measuring that based on the width of the mixed region when they mix together. He works with measuring how the momentum in the y direction changes and grows. Over here we have uh, we have a galaxy, which is which we got from a sample data set from YT. And we chose to plot density, and you can specify this kind of scale that you want. This is logarithmic. Uh, now going to uh, the technical aspect of this, uh, I can't see it right now, but the, there are actually small squares uh, for Linux terms. And uh, uh, across this, this projection, and basically, uh, the, these squares are what it are um, will make up this projection. Uh, as the squares get as smaller, it's it's basically like a a, a mesh. A me yeah, it's yeah. a mesh. And uh, you can think of it sort of as a as an integral, uh, a Riemann sum. Uh, like if you remember from calculus, uh, the the um, the rectangles get more and more. Uh, narrow, and so it, this is the same idea with this. You have smaller and smaller squares, uh, which help to make the, the projection more fluid. Uh, and the size of the these squares varies across the, this projection, depending on where it is based on this uh, parameter. Okay. And here's some more pictures. Uh, the left one is the right one zoomed in. So if you want more precision, then you can tell YT to zoom in on a specific area. And to the right is uh, something called an average radio profile, which Kevin worked with. So uh, how it works is you, instead of plotting it in a two-dimensional fashion, you have, you have, you specify a center and whatever, whatever, the data is plotted based on its distance, its radius from that center. Which, so these are the three main types that we have so far. Uh, we are going to add more. And to the right, you'll see YT outputting a bunch of information while it's processing all this data. You see YT and then info and then uh, July 13th, 1125, which is when we were making this PowerPoint. And you see all this stuff that it's doing. So the first type of plot we have is a slice plot, which is, in st which is you have this domain, this 3D domain, and you say, I wanna, I wanna slice it at this specific spot. You want a specific plane, and it's, it's a matter of precision, right? So if you want the slice to be over here versus over there, you can, you can see versus a projection plot, which is the entire thing. It's, it kind of, it's uh, how I like to think of it, it gets smushed, the entire thing gets smushed into a pancake and then you get to see everything. Also, we had intended to, uh, to plot column density, which is basically you take a, uh, let's say you have a, a circle, you, you take a, a slice of that circle, you uh, have the, the, you have density from the center to the edge of the circle, uh, and then you just, you sum the, uh, the densities, and uh, basically, and you basically have the density all pushed all the way to the, the uh, circumference of the circle. But then uh, we weren't able to do that because uh, it is no longer there is no longer pre-written code for that in YT, so we had to manually do that, which uh, didn't work for us. Okay, so this is pretty much our role, the two of us, in this whole project. So uh, we're implementing a driver inside the PyNet, which. So there's, a, there's the Casanova archive, and we are 
taking the simulation data, we're producing plots with YT, and then what we're going to do is we're going to allow that to be, uh, to be, to end up on the archive. So how it works is the user will specify, I want a projection plot of X, Y, Z or something. And depending on what input we get, the driver will determine what to produce as an image and then and then uh, it also asks for the variable that you want the variable of in question such as temperature and density and the output file name and uh, it can also because of the flexibility that we have with Python which has helped us we can also process a list of data sets to process at once and Casanova uh, that if you're wondering about the name that stands for computational uh, astrophysics simulation archive and the Nova makes it sound more Italian <laughs> <laughs> and eventually eventually um, we're going to Casanova is going to be available to the public for all to see our results uh, for the future what we're doing now is we're going to add more functionality to our driver, not just not just the three plots that we have, but we're also working on uh, fractal dimensions, which is something that a previous YSP student has implemented in the past in C++. So we're working on integrating that into our driver. Uh, plus a lot more, but we'll see. Oh, oh, sorry. All right, that's it. <laughs>